everybody for your pleasure, Mr. Peter Hudson. Thank you, Rob. Hi. How are you doing tonight? I'm uh, going to talk a little bit about recovery. Um, I'm a small town boy from British Columbia. Uh, and you get to really tell you're a small, from a small town when you go to an AA meeting, an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting. And you're like, is it really anonymous when you're related to three quarters of the people there? You're like, one day at a time, Grandma. One day at a time. Uh, a little bit of a story. I actually uh, quit cocaine seven years ago when I started stand up comedy. It gave me that stimulation I needed. And I realized that cocaine and Canadian stand up comedy are quite alike. You know, you do some quick lines. Uh, you get a little chatty, you get a little sweaty, and uh, when you're finished, you're broke, bitter, and lonely. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. Yeah. I, uh, it all started for me with uh, marijuana. Uh, by, by applause, who here wants marijuana legalized, decriminalized? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I say screw that, screw that. The, the Canadian bag of weed is probably the last thing in Canada that's not taxed. And really, do you want to watch a pothead and a pot dealer try to figure out 12% tax on a $40 bag of weed? You'd be there for three days. I love these guys that work at dispensaries. You know, uh, they think marijuana is this new wonder drug. You know, they have a strain of weed that can cure anything except for a job and a high school diploma. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's gone powerful. Marijuana's gone powerful, man. They, they, you know, they, they have this one strain of marijuana so powerful, you take one hoot and you're instantly homeless. <laughs> crazy, crazy. Oh, uh, yeah. I love the names of marijuana. You know, it's, uh, they got, uh, they're really exotic. They got Kush. They got Purple Kush. They got Afghani Thunderbubble. You know, Cambodian Knee Shaker. I always wonder, why can't these names get a little bit more realistic to what's going on? Like, like back when you're 15, why couldn't you get a bag of, oh God, there's my dad. There's my dad. Or nowadays get a bag, I can't find my keys, I'm late for work. Oh yeah. And sophisticated, it's become so sophisticated, you know, uh, they have like uh, edibles and bath bombs and, and vaporize and everything. The most sophisticated thing I had in my day was hot nights. Anybody here ever hot night? You know, the two butter nights? on the stove, and you don't know, always have one buddy that would get so stoned that he'd burn his lip. Oh, yeah. He'd have a perfect butter knife mark burnt on his lip. If you look really closely, you would say made in China, burnt on his lip. I remember I did, I was 17 years old, big old burn, and uh, my mom came home and she's like, honey, what happened to your lip? And I had to think really quickly. I'm like, oh, mom, I did it in uh, welding class. Uh, that's a welding class. She goes, well, that's it. I'm calling your welding teacher tomorrow. And I'm gonna ask him why you're doing hot nights in welding class. Oh yeah. I think uh, marijuana is gonna be legalized quite soon. Uh, and when it does, uh, somebody is gonna become a pioneer and open up a cocaine dispensary. Hey, imagine that, we could give it a cute little name like the White Spot. You know, maybe whose line is it anyways? Oh yeah, we'll call it Tim Snortons. You always got time for Tim Snortons. Roll up the bill to win. Oh my God, look at this, I just won a divorce. That's amazing. Oh uh, yeah. You know when they do, when they do uh, legalize marijuana though, uh, they just gotta take that one thing away, especially from us British Columbians that we grew up with, uh, uh, it was uh, the BC pot dealer, you know? Anybody remember the BC pot dealer? You know, he always go there and he'd be in his mother's basement. You know, and it'd be like going to t it'd be like going to Baskin Robbins to have 32 flavors of weed. You know, and he'd go in there and he on his coffee table and he'd have like bongs, so many bongs it looked like he played water chimes. You know, and he could actually have a conversation with you while he was doing bong hoots. But like, how's it going? How's your girlfriend doing? Hey man, do you know what 12% taxes on $40, bro? Yeah. 
So back to cocaine. Back to cocaine. I uh, I remember when I was doing it, everybody was always like, like, oh man, let's go party. You know, you want to party tonight? And I'm like, I don't know what kind of party consists of you and your one buddy sitting in a dark house with a front and back door locked. I one time watched thir 37 logs burn consecutively on the log burning channel. Everybody's always like, oh man, you know what I hate? It's being up in the morning and waking up and still going and it's the guilty birds. You know, having those guilty birds. It wasn't the guilty birds that bothered me. It was the guilty bus and the guilty joggers. But then you know what, I peek out the window and I see a jogger going by. I'd be like, you know what? I guarantee my heart weight's twice as high as that guy right now. <laughs> Guaranteed. Um, so yeah, I come from a long line of addiction. Uh, my, my grandfather's an alcoholic, my father's an alcoholic. Uh, my dad drank beer, but he mostly drank whiskey, and he drank R&R &R whiskey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the one with the whiskey sticker on the back. Yeah. Well, things were tough for us. We actually used those whiskey stickers for everything. Uh, we use it for duct tape. We use it for band-aids. We use it for stickums. One time I came home, my dad was passed out cold on the couch. He had two whiskey stickers over his mouth, one over his nose. My mom tried to kill my dad with whiskey stickers. <laughs> Remember grade one, every kid had a sticker book. That was a lot of fun. Oh yeah, all my friends had like He-Man stickers, Hercules stickers, Smurf stickers. Well, I had 150 whiskey stickers. <laughs> I remember it was show and tell day at school, and we had to bring our sticker book collection. I remember bringing my sticker book in my purple little Crown Royale bag. <laughs> I remember showing my teacher, she just started crying and holding me. I almost got a set of foster parents over whiskey stickers. <laughs> oh yeah, things were tough, man. My sister's prom dress was actually two Molson Canadian shirts sewn together. <laughs> She made it look nice, put a little belt around it, made a little quissage out of three whiskey stickers. That yeah, was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Memories. Yeah. I actually got my first intervention just last year. This was a lot of fun, You're not living until you get an intervention. Uh, I, went to a, I went to a cabin with my girlfriend's parents uh, on the West Coast, and uh, the first night, uh, the first night, her mom looked at me, her mom said, she goes, hey, Pierre, she goes, do you have any difficulties getting into the States? I'm like, wow, Sue, I've never been asked so politely if I've been to prison before. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, so nice oh, yeah. I like to eat when I go camping. I'm an eater, I think a lot of people do, but I get a lot of and, and uh, but uh, Saturday, they gave me a cute little nickname. It was uh, Emotional Eater Peter. Which, uh, which was really, kind of, that one kind of stuck. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. By Sunday, it kind of got weird, though. Uh, I uh, came into the kitchen, and they were all talking. All of a sudden, they went quiet. And I was like, okay, this is kind of weird. And then they're like, oh, Peter, could we uh, talk to you for a minute? I'm like, sure. They're like, you know we love you, right? Because every intervention starts with, you know we love you, right? They're like, we watched you eat eight hot dogs yesterday. And that was before the barbecue was lit. We are worried about you. I'm like, what the hell? I'm getting a food intervention? A food intervention? For all the interventions I should have had, I'm getting a food intervention. One time, I woke up in a chicken coop, in my underwear, surrounded by beer cans, covered in chicken poop. No intervention there. <laughs> oh, yeah. One time I snorted cocaine for three days off a prostitute named Dave. <laughs> no intervention there. I get caught eating one potato chip off the floor. I get an intervention. I get caught eating some pie filling out of the freezer. I, I get an intervention. You know, the only thing was missing was that cute little intervention letter from my from my 11 year old niece. You know, it would be like, "Dear Uncle Pete, you've always been my hero, but lately things have changed. I always enjoyed our trips to McDonald's, Uncle Pete, but lately the Happy Meals haven't been 
so happy. <laughs> I'm sick of you making me look the other way while you steal my french fries, Uncle P. I'm also sick of watching you eat Big Macs like Tic Tac. <laughs> Uncle Pete, all I gotta say is you've turned me into vegan. And you have to live with that. No! All right, thank you guys. You have been amazing. Thank you.